okay great yeah <laughs> we're on record uh, and yeah i see some questions here in the chat let's uh, answer these questions and then we will continue so john paul asks um, casting out demons uh, we do not need to mention where to go right uh, some people say i'm sending you to where you came from uh, what should be the right approach okay yeah good question john uh, so what we see in scripture is that um, you see when demons responded to jesus uh, in matthew 8:29 uh, they cry out you know and they say what have we to do with you jesus you son of god have you come here to torment us before the time before the time what time are they talking about if you go again to the book of revelation revelation chapter 20 where we read about uh, the the culmination of thousand years so the thousand years at that time uh, satan is cast into a bottomless pit and then he is let out for a season towards the end of those thousand years but post that you know in revelation 20 and verse 10 we are told that and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever so you see that god uh, has an end planned for satan and uh, you know needless to say the demons who are working together with him so uh, they will be cast into their final destination is what the lake of fire not right now but after the uh, the plan for this world unfolds so you know we have this age where we are living now uh, and then you know uh there is we we know that jesus has promised his second coming uh, and you know we we know that um, there's going to be the armageddon the battle and then the uh, 1000 years the millennial reign and rule of christ is something that we expect and after that you know after that comes the casting away of satan uh, and and his demons uh, and we know you know the the renewal of the earth the new heavens the new earth so there is a an order in which things are going to play out and that is why the demon that responded to jesus said have you come here to torment us before the time so there is a time john okay so we've understood that so when we are casting out a demon i think it will be sufficient to say you know i cast you out in the name of jesus and you kind of set that person free uh, uh yeah i i think that would be sufficient for us to do um uh, but then yeah i know some people say okay now you spirit you go here you go there uh, but that's not that's not required that's not required or or to say that you know i cast you into the lake of fire because that's not something that we are authorized to do god is going to do that at the end of the age so we basically set the person free and that should be enough does that answer your question or yes boss yeah thank you okay great great yeah thank you thanks john okay so zelitoli has another question here and it says uh i have noticed some ministers of god while they minister to the demon possessed person they engage with them in conversation like who are you what's your name uh how long you are in this body so i'm wondering why they do so and is it ne- really necessary to dig into that instead of just setting that person free so zelitoli uh it is not necessary but sometimes it can be helpful while we are ministering okay uh now in the case of jesus we know that jesus asked and then this uh person responded saying we are legion okay so there was a conversation but that's not his typical style now if you go and look at other instances where jesus cast out demons he doesn't ask 
he doesn't he just says okay come out right so uh, it's not necessary all the time now where is it helpful you know it can be helpful remember we said that demon spirits are very specialized so sometimes when you're casting out a demon and then you kind of feel like you're stuck like what is happening why isn't this demon coming out so for us to get some information uh that would be helpful uh we could do that and say who are you you know that can lead us to a, a better way of ministering to that person sometimes it happens i remember this one person okay and very interesting uh, the time we had uh, uh two or three of us you know we had gone to minister to a boy uh and this guy you know because of his background he had come from a lot of you know certain worship and this and that so he was bound by many demon spirits and we were ministering to him we were casting out spirits and there were quite a few spirits in him okay uh, and i there was this one lady with us i i don't even know she and she was operating by the gift of you know that the discerning of spirits it's it's uh, a gift of the holy spirit so she was operating by that spirit and when we had cast out and i was thinking yeah he's fine you know he he had fallen and he was looking like he was at uh, rest uh, and all and i was thinking yeah it's done you know we are ready to go now but she's like no 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 i can see i can see uh, there is this spirit there is the spirit of the snake and the spirit of i'm like what are you saying how do you even know all these things are within and he's like she's like i don't know how to explain but it's still there can be minister for some more time and sure enough you know we were praying and the way he was behaving uh, uh, you know we could relate to what she was saying uh, and uh, you know some more spirits came out of that boy so what i'm saying is sometimes you no know, zelitoli it can be helpful but we shouldn't make it a practice only if it is required okay only if it is required you you ask that question and you might get an answer you can discern what kind of spirit is operational in that individual and then it you may be in a better position to cast it out so does it make sense yes pastor that was very helpful thank you oh, okay great 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 yeah sure okay thanks uh, zeltoli really good question uh, all right yeah so even uh, uh, sitkenu is asking the same question and i've read this uh, somewhere uh, that a certain preacher uh, you know he cast out uh, demons from a person and he wasn't sure whether uh, there are still uh, demons that exist so he just asked a question he just asked a question like in the name of jesus you know uh, uh, i ask you because with authority he asked because you know when you go with authority they have to respond they are they are bound by that authority they can't do their own thing so he commanded them i command you to to reveal if you are still there and then the demon spirit started speaking and said yes i'm there you know i'm so and so and i'm still there so then he knew that he must continue to cast the spirits out and that the ministry to this individual is not over so you know in some instances you have to be discerning um to use this and to make it like you know i i i know what zeli is talking about and sitkenu is talking but sometimes it becomes a show it becomes like an entertaining um activity where the person ministering is saying who are you where did you come from and the spirit is speaking back and the person is you know behaving in a certain way and people are watching all this taking place and they're thinking wow you know this is entertaining but that's not our goal isn't it what is our goal our goal is to honor god our goal is to glorify god our goal is to set that person free we are not here to put that person through uh, you know that that whole process uh, the shorter the process the better because you know that person is free now and we can minister to them strengthen them with god's word and uh, help them you know uh, go forward in life so uh, yeah it's it's 
we have to really be discerning and that's what i would say okay really good questions uh, everyone any more any more thoughts questions it's good to clarify like this it makes the class interesting as well yeah yeah go ahead go ahead sir kenu ma'am i was having a question like whenever i am going to a jesus calls mm -hmm. there is a certain there is a certain group of people uh -huh. every time any whenever whenever any the pastor is coming they will come they will say they are demon possessed when last time i went there there was a man he came and the pastor there prayed for him he wept very badly he was lying down he was breaking chairs and after i left i that man took a new testament they prayed with him with an oil and he went i thought that demon is gone next day when i was there that man was there he was doing same things now say it it's been seven times i have seen his his demon is not gone but whenever a pastor is praying for him he says like now i am free i am feeling light burden my thing inside me is gone i am free now but i don't know it is there is a no complete solution so what we can do in this kind of situations yeah yeah good good question uh, sit kenu you see you know to recognize whether the person is really set free uh and that's why i'm saying no that we we really have to uh, grow in in that discerning of spirits we have to operate by the authority the believers authority but also the gifts of the spirit okay so we will get better at this now is it possible that we think we have cast out one demon <laughs> sorry and it is still around it is possible okay now this individual it is possible that people prayed for him um and uh, you know maybe they cast out some spirits but they didn't cast out all spirits okay so that also is a possibility uh, but the good thing is to keep ministering so uh, early on when i i was studying about believers authority and all i've read this book from uh, derek prince uh, what's it called uh, and he shall cast out demons or something like that it's titled that so he talks about uh, we'll go to all this later okay we'll go to all this much later but in the ministry of jesus it seems like it was immediate come out and the demon came out but for whatever reason when we minister uh, deliverance sometimes it can be a long process you know it can be something that happens over hours it can be something that happens you know today you're ministering to the person but you feel like it's not over you know i still need to i i can sense that there, there's still some demons there or uh, all that so what you can do is you can minister the next day you can minister for a couple of days till the person is completely set free so in practicality you know when it comes to the ministry of deliverance it can happen over time so now we don't know about this one particular individual now maybe there's still some uh, demons in there uh, and uh, people need to minister continue to minister to him you know so all that is there there's also this thing about the will of the individual okay our ministry of deliverance is only as successful as the will of the person now let's say i'm ministering to this person okay and uh, uh, everything is operational in me you know holy spirit gifts of the spirit believers authority and i'm casting out and all but this person is thinking to himself i don't want to be free i'm happy like this now if that person does not have the will the demon will not come out i can i can minister for days weeks months nothing will happen so the will of the person is also something so in some cases you know we may have to spend time with that man we may have to teach him god's word we may have to show him see this is what jesus has done for you he wants an abundant life for you you're going through all this are you ready you know to to let jesus set you free are you ready you know we we have to uh, work with that person maybe teach him the word of god a little bit before you minister deliverance you know and that might make a huge difference to the individual so you know there's all these dynamics all these dynamics uh, and so in the very specific 
uh, case, uh, Sitkin is logged out. Uh, hopefully, he'll see the recording. So in this specific case, it's hard to tell why this individual continued to behave the way he did. Okay. Now, here's the last thing. I told us that everything is not a demon. Okay. Everything is not a demon. So sometimes, okay, sometimes what happens is we think a person has a demon, but it could be that they have a mental health condition. Okay. Um, or, uh, you know, the other day I, I just happened to be at the emergency and I saw this one person coming and full chaos. He was screaming, shouting. He looked like, you know, he, his hair was uh, disorderly. His clothes were disorderly and he came in. Uh, and my first thought was, man, seems demon possessed, uh, you know, but then the doctors were ministering to him and then he kind of calmed down. So then I was like, hey, yeah, he could just have had, you know, uh, uh, like uh, he probably has a mental illness and uh, maybe he hasn't taken his medication, right? Or it could be that later uh, my sister was with me and uh, he kind of... Kind of Almost after a while, he kind of just sobered down. And my sister was saying, oh, maybe uh, he was under the influence, uh, substance abuse. Maybe he, he consumed something and he's reacting. like So there are many reasons to look at somebody who's acting, you know, weird. And just every time say, you're demon possessed, I have to cast out a demon would be wrong. It would be wrong. So, um, yeah, it could just be that individual. And, you know, sometimes it's also... That some people behave like that. Uh, every other meeting, they behave weird. I don't know. Maybe maybe they need to be taught God's word to, to secure them in God's word and say that, you know, you're already set free and you don't have to. Uh, it, it's in their control, you know, but they behave as if uh, there is a demon affecting them. So you see, there are all this, there's this whole range uh, and which is why whenever we read about demonology, believer's authority, there is no formula. Even if a person has cast out demons a thousand times, the next time that we are going to cast out a demon, we have to depend on the Holy Spirit. We have to depend on God. We have to humble ourselves before God because we don't know the formula for this individual. You, you understand? So it's such a... Uh, it's a very humbling uh, sort of a ministry. You have to humble yourself before the Lord and say, God, you show me how to minister to this individual. And for all you know, the way you're ministering to this thousand and one person is completely different from all your thousand experiences. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's, it's like that. And I, I really hope uh, all these insights help us. Okay. Uh, uh, Sitkino, you got lo logged out for a little bit, but I hope your question is answered. Yes, ma'am. Mac. Yes, ma'am. Mac. Okay. Nice. Nice. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, everyone. It, it's really interesting and good to, you know, try and understand things in a nice way so that we, we can actually apply it in our lives. All right. Okay. Now, let's move on. <clears throat> If you have questions, you can always um, ask, stop me anytime and ask me. But we'll continue with our notes here. I'm on page 19. Uh, we have uh, described the personality of Satan with the different names that describe him. There are also kinds of demonic spirits. And this is in line with what we were saying. There are specialized spirits. You know, sometimes um, people say, Jezebel, spirit of Jezebel, or this spirit, that spirit. People use descriptors to explain the activity of those spirits. So what is spirit of Jezebel? See, spirit of Jezebel, when you go back and study about the life of Jezebel, you know that she had many, you know, she had people under her who were engaged in witchcraft. And uh, they, the, the, through the, the whole sorcery, witchcraft, what she was able to do is she was able to intimidate. Okay. She was able to intimidate. She was able to control, manipulate. 
right using those spirits so when someone says spirit of jezebel that's what we understand the activity what activity is going on seducing controlling manipulating you know sorcery witchcraft so those kind of things come under that spirit of jezebel so similarly when you read scripture and you know in the in the new testament you have so many um spirits that that are referred to there is the spirit of antichrist now apostle john talks about it what is the spirit of antichrist spirit of antichrist is a spirit that says that jesus is not god okay now the spirit of antichrist might try to prove that jesus is not god by saying he was never really fully man you know he was always god so his death is not true death so there are people who subscribe to philosophies like that but then apostle john says the spirit of antichrist is at work in this world you know, proving that jesus was not fully man or proving that jesus was not fully god he was only man you know whenever there is an interference with who christ is that is the spirit of the antichrist okay so uh, yeah so there are people uh, that the spirit of antichrist is trying to convince you know that that jesus is not truly god uh, so in the last days we know that these are the kind of spirits that are working because they don't want people to believe in jesus christ they don't want people to receive their salvation so when we pray right spiritual warfare when we pray we say okay we bind the spirit of antichrist you know things like that so how does all this help it helps us as the holy spirit guides us and leads us and shows us hey come on this is what you're fighting you fight like this okay it really helps us uh, gear up in that manner so spirit of antichrist deceiving spirits doctrines of demons okay these are all terms that are used in the new testament so can there be demons that give doctrines yeah they can right so they can provide a whole philosophy or a teaching but what is the test of that philosophy is it drawing me close to god if it's not then you know this is not from god it's taking us away from god okay but if there is you know the truth of god's word which is drawing us closer to god helping us grow in god we know that that is you know the the truth of god's word that is uh, uh, scripture so in this manner we can analyze what is going on you know why why is this teaching being propagated in this certain community doctrines of demons things like that okay so just for our discernment and just for our understanding jealous spirit that's also another term uh, that you see so when you see sometimes you no know, the activity is in the in the name itself so when you hear a like a, a name people use all kinds of and you know some some of the uh, latest christian teachings that i have heard people have so many names leviathan spirit and something something spirit and something something spirit well don't get very caught up in that you know if that name helps us minister well and good but if not uh, to just do a phd in all you know there is this spirit and that spirit how does it help okay so it's it's good not to get caught up you know too much in those things um so there are a lot of new names not just scriptural names but you would hear you know new 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 names of demon spirits but here in scripture i'm i'm telling you some spirits that we see jealous spirit so with the name itself you can identify the activity what would it do it causes jealousy right it causes jealousy among people what does jealousy lead to jealousy leads to murder isn't it uh, maybe not physically but people slander others people put down others and we know in the case of cain and abel what happened you know it started with unforgiveness bitterness jealousy and here was cain he went and murdered his brother okay but jealous spirit spirit of jealousy familiar spirit familiar spirit is a lot of people talk about this spirit familiar spirit is the spirit that kind of knows us it knows our weaknesses as individuals every individual we have our own strengths we have our own weaknesses so a familiar spirit knows so it kind of 
you know, leads you into error uh, by knowing the kind of person that you are. So sometimes I, I have been to meetings where people say, okay, pray, cast out the familiar spirit. Nothing wrong with it. If that, if the person is being led to pray that, I've prayed that over myself in Jesus name. Every, I, I, I break the hold of every familiar spirit upon me in the name of Jesus. Okay. So it's useful. It's useful in knowing the activity and then kind of breaking that activity of the particular spirit. Okay, so familiar spirit, blind spirit, uh, these spirits not just affect us emotionally in our soul realm, but they could also affect us physically. So maybe an individual is in the, in the Bible, we know when Jesus cast out the blind spirit, the person could see. Okay, so they can also cause like physical illnesses. Uh, sicknesses, deformities, disabilities. So if the Holy Spirit is showing us, oh, this person's blindness is because of a spirit, as soon as you cast it out, they will be free from that issue. Or mute spirit, dumb spirit, you cast it out, they are free from that issue. So yeah, we see these names, blind spirit, deaf and dumb spirit, spirit of infirmity. Uh, in this case, I think spirit of infirmity is used when there is that lady, you know, who is bound and Jesus says, woman, thou art loosed. So the spirit of infirmity or the sickness uh, over her body. And when the spirit came out, she became straight. You know, so you see, there are, there are issues that people are going through, which are merely natural. You know, it can just be merely, if I have a common cold and I'm coughing, 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 it's not a spirit of coughing. I'm just coughing because I'm in this physical body and I have issues. But you see, there can, there can be spirits that cause a particular sickness. In this case, Luke 13, that woman was bound. The spirit bound her, the spirit of infirmity. And the moment you cast out the spirit, she became straight. Okay. So physical challenges can also be caused by demon spirits. Then unclean spirit. You come out unclean spirit now, unclean spirit could have to do with uh you know i i specifically do not know, you know maybe evil thoughts and you know evil suggestions and uh, things like that in in one's mind so uh unclean spirit jesus cast out unclean spirits foul spirit spirit of disobedience spirit of divination you know divination is uh future telling uh that woman, that the lady, uh, that um, who ministered to, I think Paul, yeah, Paul in Ephesus, she had a spirit of divination. She was telling people's future. Okay. But you see, Satan always has a counterfeit. We know that in, in, in scripture, we have prophecy, which is good, which is, uh, which, which is from God, but Satan creates a counterfeit, something opposite spirit of divination. That is from the demonic world, future telling. So nowadays we have all this, right? Like new age and so many things where people tell future. Or, or you know, or if not the future, they, they say things like, uh, oh, I know this happened in 1953. This happened in your life. Uh, that happened in your life. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible because demon spirits can get old information and uh, we must recognize that demon spirits cannot tell the future. You know, they, might, they might probably say something based on what you have revealed. So let's say, for example, somebody wants to become a lawyer. Okay. And this person is in the law school and this and that. And then they go to someone, uh, you know, some future telling person and the future telling person says, are you are you planning to become a lawyer? I see that, you know, you, you are going to be a lawyer. How does this person know? Only God knows the future. Okay. Because God is all knowing. Satan does not know the future and his demon spirits do not know the future, but what can they do? They can kind of play a game, a deceiving game and uh, give bits and pieces here and there. And it sounds like, they're telling you your future, okay? Putting pieces together. So, you know, things like that. Spirit of divination is, is from the wrong source. 
that is the kingdom of darkness there is a prediction being made that this is going to happen that is going to happen so there are spirits of divination that uh, that uh, do these activities mm, there are lying spirits uh, there's a perverse spirit i'm not going into details okay because just their name itself tells you what they do perverse spirit spirit of heaviness sometimes uh, it happens uh, people f it's not even just mental depression it's not just that even after medication counseling you find the person is not better maybe there is a demonic uh, uh, root to this issue spirit of heaviness constantly feeling down constantly but when you cast out the spirit what happens you see a sudden change oh wow how did this person you know uh, become normal and joyful because the spirit of heaviness was cast off of this individual um spirit of harlotry spirit of bondage spirit of fear spirit of error okay so i want to tell you this in my personal experience it has happened there was this one time in my life it was pretty challenging you know that was the time when my mother was diagnosed uh, you know with with uh, cancer and so many things were going on and it was very like i very fearful i was fearful about what's going to happen you know what's going to happen to me this and that and i think i kind of let that work too much in my in my heart uh, one day i still remember i still remember i was sitting and i think i had given my thoughts to this pattern of fear what's going to happen to her what's going to happen to me what's going to happen to the future what so i'm sitting and i'm thinking about my job and my this and that about money and i just became fearful and fearful and more and more and more fearful and i felt like you know i'm going deep into the fear and it didn't feel normal it felt like yeah i am fearful but it felt like something more is attached to my normal sense of fear see fear is normal okay there's nothing um, wrong with that we all have you know some level of fear but this was also feeling like i am there is an extra uh, pressure you know over over my my thought process and i was just praying and i was saying lord help me to come out of this help me to come out i'm not able to come out of it i feel i could feel the fear and i could feel like i'm going to i was shivering almost just sitting by myself nobody was doing anything to me but i was almost shivering and i remember having a mobile phone in my hand and i said lord jesus please help me i don't know what is happening to me uh, and i i just want somebody to pray with me i just want somebody to pray with me and those days i used to listen to um, uh, like a series um, a prayer series on on the phone uh, and i i i suddenly just tuned into that i went to that that place uh, and in that a person would pray uh online he would pray online he would say okay uh, whoever is listening to me agree with me this is what god's word says and it is the most amazing thing he was praying against the spirit of fear and uh, i don't know it was all just so miraculous he just started saying that uh, uh, whoever is listening to me agree with me uh, uh, we bind the spirit of fear in the name of jesus and uh, uh, pray together with me to cast the spirit out lay your hands on yourself it was all so prophetic and i was like yeah yeah i need this i really need this and i you know put my hand on myself and, and i said i cast out the spirit of fear in the mighty name of jesus i like literally prayed over myself and and uh, i still remember till today it was like that i was in deep fear and in moments i was able to breathe i was able to like you know feel better and feel free and i knew what was happening to me in those moments was not normal or natural there was a spirit of fear which had sort of gained entry because i was entertaining thoughts of fear the whole time you know and uh, i took authority in jesus name and god really helped me and i broke off of that um, that that you know that the activity of the spirit of fear over my life so you know things like that you can how does the name help the name helps to recognize the activity and then you can break it okay so uh, I, i'm sharing with you you know some practical things um and this might really help us okay use 
what we are learning okay just some additional thoughts there that we are going to uh, touch on before we wrap up today's class there is a comment here by sitkenu he says man i have seen in my neighborhood and in north india it happens when a baby is born the parents take their baby to the temple and the saint in the temple they tell everything about a child's life by considering his time and month of birth and looking at star and planet and they say 94% it is true Uh, is this at demonic so yeah uh, sitkenu uh, for us believers you no know, uh, this kind of future telling uh, it's not it's not a godly thing okay it is demonic where is all this information coming from see basically the source if it's not from god then where is it from it is from the demonic realm okay so yes it is Uh, demonic uh, and talking about the accuracy of of somebody saying as i told you satan is finite he does not know the future but he can gauge okay so whatever is being spoken things of the past yes it can be very accurate because satan knows he has spying spirits he can find out oh what did you do last night what did you have for dinner last night he would know but to say exactly what is going to happen in one's future satan can't do that so how accurate are these things that are told to people i don't know i don't know but there's also this thing of you know a lot of people believe they believe in these things yeah because i i am like you know i'm from this category of the stars my personality is like so when you believe obviously those things happen isn't it so a lot of people believe in these things and thereby things manifest in their lives so it could be because of that okay uh, i hope it my answer was helpful sitkenu yes ma'am it was helpful okay nice nice good okay uh, joy i see your hand raised you have something to say yeah thank you i i would i wanted to add something about what you were saying and is that when you go to these places and participate into the those things you are like giving like satan and his demonic powers to have like power over your life either because yeah. you are yeah. participating on that it's like when um uh god says to the people to his people like don't do what the gentiles or the pagans so and because if you participate on that you will just have something with them so it's like to have some with with satan when you go to do these things so it's because the things that they say happened because you give dominion to them about your life when you're participating with them in this kind of meetings or reunions So that's why and and even though in that moments you can just bring access to them to put some spirits on your life because that has happened in my family and it's actually what you know an an example like my mom was about to lose my brother and she went to a person who was able to bring him back to life and the thing that this girl did was to split on his mouth some kind of alcohol and my brother has been dealing with this issue for all his life like being in an alcoholic and having this problem until the holy spirit just revealed to us that it was because of that participation that my mom had when he was a child so uh, my brother used to say like it's like something that it's not me it's like it just have dominion over me because i don't just don't want to keep drinking but it's like something bigger than me and then after he rebukes that like he rejected that spirit that of, of alcoholism of alcoholism he could be free from that so i just want to add that yeah thank you thank you joy thank you for sharing the experience uh that brings a lot of clarity 
to to us as we learn about the subject and so thank you so much uh, for sharing your story yeah and it's true as joy is saying uh, sometimes uh, people give the access people give the authority they give the right over to uh, these spirits and then things start manifesting in their lives and they say it's true it's true you know it says like this and it's true but why is it happening it's happening because the individual or the community they have given access to uh, certain spirits to work in their lives so uh, and that's how you know these spirits operate so now we've looked at the fact that uh, they are specialized they have names they have uh, specific activities that they are engaged in um, and uh, discerning that you know can help us get free from them now moving on a little more information about these spirits uh, would be that demons believe and tremble before god Okay, that's what James two uh, nineteen says. Even demons know God, and they tremble before Him. So you see, in the in the spiritual realm, okay, in the spiritual realm, there is there is complete recognition of which kingdom, you know, a person belongs to, and uh, these demon spirits, though they have their own hierarchy in the kingdom of darkness, they know that God is above everything. they know you know that that god is that that ultimate creator and scriptures tell us that they tremble okay they tremble before god uh we see that there are this is additional information so it's not necessarily in order but uh, it it will give you a better understanding we also see that demons have degrees of wickedness Okay. and degrees of power so if you just go back to the uh scripture that john read when we started today's uh, sessions in um, matthew chapter 12 a spirit that is cast out of a person goes uh, into arid lands and it brings seven more seven spirits what is the explanation more wicked than the original spirit so that tells us there are levels of wickedness uh, uh maybe some are engaging in some simpler activities some are little more complicated uh, in in what they do so there are levels and degrees of activity of these demon spirits so uh, that's why i'm telling us there is no formula we have to walk with the lord and that is what the ministry of deliverance is all about okay so even when you're talking about spirit of fear maybe you cast out spirit of fear which is at a certain level and you're ministering to someone else some other level of the spirit of fear you know so there are all these levels of wickedness um and so we we really have to discern and walk with the lord and notice here that you know the spirit goes out and if the person has not become born again and if the person is not uh, you know walking like listening to the truth of god's word and being transformed so that clean house okay or the the uh, spirit of that person is is completely aligned to the truth of god's word and filled with the holy spirit if that's not happening then you know that it comes back with seven other spirits okay so this also gives us an understanding that you know whenever there are demon spirits operational they they try to do team work okay and i don't know how good this team work is but uh, it's like if there is i uh, remember earlier i said unforgiveness and as a believer i'm not getting rid of the unforgiveness it can go to higher degrees of unforgiveness within me uh in the natural sense but if i give access to the spirits then there can be a spirit of unforgiveness operational now this spirit of unforgiveness will not operate by itself it can bring in other spirits it can bring in you know spirit of bitterness spirit of jealousy spirit of murder spirit of so then they're all and working as a team and that individual is tormented you know by all of these 
and that is why it's best never to give access even this much ground to uh, uh, wrong sinful habits okay uh, because it opens the door for so much more to take place okay so things like that uh, so these demons have degrees they operate in groups and teams um, then uh, demons have a will a freedom to choice okay and that seems very weird like oh why would god still allow them to have a will uh, but it's true uh, remember when jesus cast out the spirit fr uh, from that uh, uh, man in gadarenes uh, they told jesus where they wanted to go please uh, please uh, make us to go into the pigs so they chose and jesus said okay you go you go into the pigs so they have a freedom of choice they do what they want to do they decide okay they have a will of their own um demons know believers who walk in authority remember the, how how did the demons address jesus they say oh we know who you are we know who you are why have you come here to torment us so what is happening they are recognizing this man with authority okay and similarly if you look at the story of paul in acts chapter 19 when the sons of skiva come to cast out demons they say hey paul jesus we know paul we know who are you you know in the in the spiritual realm we don't recognize you you are not born again you are not having the authority of god you have no authority who are you so they recognize authority and and uh, you know people with spiritual authority in the uh, in the realm the spiritual realm these demon spirits uh, and then okay there there is a comment by joy joy i'll just quickly wrap this up and then you know i'll come to you uh, the next thing is that some people think that demons are the spirits of dead people but we've already clarified the bible says that satan and his demons one third of this demons were cast here into the i mean they they came to the world and you know they are the ones who are uh, operational here so uh, to say that when people die their spirits are wandering around it's it's not biblical because the people who are in christ jesus you know paul says to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord so where did the spirit of that person go the believing person it went straight to the presence of god so that's very reassuring for us now those who are not uh, born again where does their spirit go jesus taught so many sermons on hell you know it's a reality it's a reality those who die without christ they go to hell but of course we know that you know There, there's going to be a final, final judgment, but until that, until such time, they are in Hades, they are in hell, and then again they come out, again they are judged, and then they go into eternal, uh, you know, banishment. So uh, that's that's the thing. So to say that demon spirits are spirits of dead people, it's not biblical. Demon spirits are not spirits of dead people; they are disembodied spirits. that are functional operational here on the earth okay and demon spirits understand that time on the earth remember john's question so we are not here commanding them to be cast into the fire because there is a time that god has set for them to be cast into the fire and that is why the demon spirits when they talk to jesus they say why have you come here to torment us before our time okay so they know right now what is the time we we'll do our maximum activity of destruction in the world you know don't interfere with us that's the attitude that they carry but you know you we we have to take our authority against them so they know their final they know their time they know their final destination which is uh, you know eternal destruction um then uh, yeah there are some uh fallen angels that are caught up in hades uh, there is scripture references to that as well so not all are here uh, uh on the earth but there are some that are caught up in hades uh and then demons influence 
all the spheres of human existence, whether it is the field of business, arts, media, politics, uh, health, education, culture, morals, you know, they, they have an influence. Uh, and uh, we, as God's people, have to shine the light and we have to have a greater influence than these demonic powers. Okay, one minute left. So Joy, uh, please go ahead, Joy. Uh, did you want to say something? Yes, I have two questions, but one, okay. The first is, I had this experience and twice it has happened to me. Like when I try to pray for someone that it doesn't seem like he is possessed, but then when it's like when I am about to put my hand on them, they just start to manifest so they but they just go away as speaking blasphemies towards god and i i have seen like this kind of um behavior on people like demons manifesting through them just when they see authority they they avoid the christian right but what happened when you have these visitations overnight, like this, this spirit that try to um, intimidate you and just to don't let you sleep and just put some other stuff in, in you. I don't know, like doesn't like, yeah, trying to intimidate you overnight and they are like, feel like stronger. But when they recognize, you know, about talking about authority of the Christians, how is this that some of them flew away, but there are these others that just go and try to have like this infiltration with you? That's yeah. That, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Joy. That's uh, again, you know, um, uh, interesting. So you see, the other thing about demons when we study about ministry, that time we'll we'll see that they can be very stubborn, okay? Uh, they, remember we said they're disembodied spirits. Once they get a place, they don't want to leave it. So they will, they will fight to stay. They will fight to stay. But uh, for us as believers, it's enough for us to know that we have the authority. Uh, sometimes we see them leave immediately. Sometimes it's, it takes a little more, uh, you know, effort from our side to keep ministering, to keep standing on God's word uh, and keep using our authority, but keep doing it. Sooner or later, they have to, uh, they have to um, give in to God's word. But it is true that Sometimes it takes a while because these spirits are very stubborn. They don't want to leave the activity that they are engaged in. So I hope that helps you, Joy, that answers your question. Yeah, but I was asking like for these demons that, okay, mm. I like, I don't have them, but they mm. try to, I don't know if it's like to start a fight with the Christian or they're just like visiting overnight yeah. just to don't let you rest yeah. or... Yeah like yeah. waking you up or all this stuff, you know, like, and sometimes they are easy to um, cast out and some other times it's like harder and the presence of them, it's like heavier than the others. I don't know how to explain that, but it, it's what I had happened to me. Yes. Like, how is that, that some of them like flew away like really quick and the other ones are like, it's like if they were more, powerful in just like you know like they stay longer than they should even though they know you're christian and you have certain authority over them yeah sure sure joy. so see joy uh, uh it's like here on the earth we are living in a battlefield um and uh do such things happen? Do these spirits come to intimidate us, disturb us? Um, yes, you know, it could happen and it happens. Uh, they don't let you rest. They don't. It's fine. Like, I mean, it happens. But every time something like this happens for us as a believer, instead of going into, oh, my gosh, like, oh goodness, what is this? 
instead of going into that, just take your authority. If you sense that, yes, I'm having, you know, this is going on. I know this is demonic. You just you, take authority, speak aloud and say, I take authority in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit that is intimidating me, that is disturbing me, causing restlessness. In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. So each time you just take authority, that's all. Does it happen? Yes, it happens uh, many times. And what you said, some leave right away, some uh, are more, they they continue to, you know, press more. So that's what I'm saying. It depends on the kinds of demon spirits. Some are more stubborn. Uh, whatever the case, just stand your ground. That's the whole point. Keep standing your ground. Sooner or later, they have to bow to you because the authority of Christ is very real. They can play around, not for too long. They have to they have to leave yeah so uh yeah yeah th thank you thank you and okay. i have the question i have another question <laughs> oh, okay also. okay yeah joy uh, if uh, okay go ahead let me see if i can accommodate it quickly because uh the others are also waiting on the call yeah okay okay uh, is this like in in genesis we see like about the fighting angels who came together with women right so i used to think that they were like demons like having this this understanding but who are them the like you said and in, in the teachings like they are not demons but who are them so because the bible talks about them Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, uh, Joy, you know, I get that. But you could just take them as another category of, uh, uh, you know, uh, angels. They, they are not demons because we're talking about disembodied spirits. And you see, their activity was completely different, isn't it? They married, uh, I mean, they... Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So Nephilim, uh, I think and there's like a whole uh, range of teachings about uh, those beings as well. But I don't see, there's no consequence for us as believers from those teachings. So, okay. yeah, yeah. So it's different, uh, Joy, if you... Okay, so it's say. like they don't have anything to do with us like right no, now. No, 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 no. We are talking about disembodied spirits and their activities, demons. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, that was an interesting class, and uh, let's let's keep it, you know, active. Uh, do come up with your practical uh, questions here, and we'll continue with the rest of uh, uh, the subject soon. Uh, and yeah, February, I need to post your assignments. So hopefully, this semester uh, it'll be a, a little more uh, on time compared to the last semester. Okay, so uh, yeah, please go through your notes, study everybody, and uh, we'll I'll catch you in the next session next Friday. Okay, thank you. Bye for now. God bless. Thank you, Buster. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you God bless you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Nice God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.